Joseph here with another video. And today I'm going to talk to you about some exciting news. Exciting news for me here locally and all the other record collectors in this area. Because I live here in McAllen, Texas. And ever since I've renewed my interest in records, there's only been one vinyl shop here in McAllen. But there's a new kid on the block. And the name of the shop they just opened last week is called Far Out Records. And it's run by uh, two guys, uh, one named Zach and one named Isaac. And they've been very active the last couple of years here doing pop-ups at coffee shops and other places around town. And they always have excellent albums at excellent prices. They're real nice guys. And so I was really pleased and surprised when they opened up a shop locally here in the next city over, which is called uh, Far Texas. And they named their shop Far Out Records. That's P-H-A-R-R, -R, named after the city. A cool name. And it's a small shop. And I went there for the first time last week. Like I say, it's a small shop, and uh, but it's packed. It's packed with lots, uh, lots of goodies, and they're still in the process of deciding, I guess, how they're going to set up the shop and exactly what's going to go in it. But uh, what I found on my first visit was um, some nuggets indeed. The first one I found, I was really pleased because I went to the jazz section, which is not huge, but it's a good jazz section nevertheless. And I found this one, Nefertiti by Miles Davis. And I'm always on the lookout for Miles in the wild. Very seldom have I ever seen uh, any in the local shops here. Of course, in California, when I head down there, I see them occasionally. But Nefertiti, Miles Davis, this is the classic quintet with uh, Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, uh, Ron Carter, and of course, Tony Williams. And this is a great album. This is, I believe, from the... I think it's 66 or 67 it's towards towards the end of the 60s before miles went electric but it's an amazing album i've been giving this a uh, thorough listen ever since last week and really enjoyed digging into it the classic miles quintet so this was a big score it's a re-release but super clean condition and i was more than happy to find nefertiti miles davis after digging through the jazz section and finding Nefertiti, I went to the blues section. And this is what I found is Muddy Waters, I'm Ready. And this is one of Muddy's later albums. It's his first release on Columbia Records. And it's on the Blue Sky label. You can see that right there. And uh, Muddy's in great form on these albums. He's uh, produced by Johnny Winter. And he's still got his, uh, he has his original band going there. Here he's got uh, Jimmy Rogers, uh, Willie Horton, Pine Top Perkins, Bob Margolin, Jerry Portnoy also on uh, harmonica, of course, Johnny there, and Willie uh, Big Eye Smith on drums. So it's the classic Muddy Band from that era. And Muddy is still in great shape. He's sounding uh, ra raring to go. He's definitely ready. And on this one, he plays I'm Ready, 33 years. A lot of the classics, I'm your hoochie coochie man. A, a rock me and good morning little schoolgirl among are some of the titles and i'm always on that lookout for uh, muddy at a decent price and i i really intend to get most of these columbia albums i had them all all at one time in my original collection and because they're pretty cheap for the considering the quality of the music and they sound excellent and i'm ready muddy waters so those are the two titles i picked up at the record store and I just also like to uh, share with you a couple items I found recently at the thrift stores locally here in McAllen. And the first one up is uh, Joe Jackson, Night and Day. And uh, I wasn't a big fan of the music of the 80s, especially the MTV era bands. And Joe Jackson definitely had that big hit with Stepping Out. But as much as I really disliked MTV and that whole era of music, I actually spent most of the 80s listening to the Grateful Dead uh, live tapes and a lot of blues and a lot of jazz, but very little of the popular music that was popular in the day. But I always enjoyed Joe Jackson and that video stepping out always caught my attention with that grooving, propulsive uh, uh, synthesizer bass line. And I've uh, always been on the lookout for this particular album because mainly because it's got that song but I've been uh, really enjoying listening to it in, in, uh, and finding some of the other good aspects of the album. And uh, it's a fold-out album. You can see Joe in the band. Uh, what I also find interesting about this album is uh, there is no guitar on this album. It's all keyboard. 
a lot of Latin percussion. And uh, like I say, I'm thoroughly enjoying this one. Uh, Joe Jackson stepping out. I'm glad I found it. This one's in pretty good condition too. And another album I found, it's been some time ago I found this album in the thrift store, but I finally got around to cleaning it and uh, giving it a spin. And it's Diana by Diana Ross. This is, of course, one of her, her most popular uh, solo releases. This is the one that's produced by um, Niall Rogers and, um, and Bernard Edwards. Of course, it's got her big hit. Let me see which way I'm going here. Uh, I'm Coming Out, uh, Give It Up, Tenderness, Have Fun, Upside Down, You're Turning Me. Those were the big hits for Diana off this album. And what can I say? I'm Once again, I was not a big fan of dance music and all that whole genre. But anytime you get Nile Rodgers uh, producing, uh, his grooves are infectious. And he really hits the sweet spot on this one with Diana. And I've been enjoying listening to this one too, even though I'm not a big dance music guy. But it's definitely a great listen. So those are my recent finds uh, at the local record store. Once again, a shout out to Far Out Records in Far, Texas. And if you're in the Rio Grande Valley, I highly encourage you to check them out. And uh, I think you'll be more than pleased. But if you like this video, like, subscribe. And that's it for now. Joseph out.